morning again. Welcome to the 134th meeting of the Pennsylvania Fish and Boat Commission. Uh, Chad, if you could do a roll call, please. Thank you, Mr. President. Oh, no. Sorry. Present. Vice President Lewis. Present. Commissioner Allen. Present. Commissioner Ames. Here. Commissioner Brock. Here. Commissioner Charles. Here. Here. Commissioner Cobb. Here. Commissioner Pastor. Present. Commissioner Stout. Here. Would everybody stand for the pledge, please? Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God. Indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Okay, next on our agenda will be elections of the president and the vice president. We'll start with the president. Is there any nominations for president? I would like to nominate Eric Hussar to be president of the board for the coming year, and I would second that. Any other nominations? We'll take a vote. All in favor by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Next will be the vice president position. Any nominations? Uh, I would like to nominate Richard Lewis to be vice president. Second that nomination. I have a second. Any others? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Anything else we had? Thank you. Uh, we'll move on. We have minutes from the April meeting, um, April 30th meeting, and we also have minutes from the May 20, 20th meeting. We don't. Together's fine. Okay, I'll make a motion that the minutes of both meetings be approved as distributed. Seconded. Is there a second? Any discussion? All in favor by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, next, awards and presentations. Corey, please. Thank you. Good morning, Commissioners, again, Executive Director, uh, staff, guests. It's my privilege this morning to recognize uh, two of our programs we have within the Bureau of Law Enforcement, and that would be the, the HARP team and the SWERT team. Um, if you were here earlier for the committee meeting, we talked a little bit about the Higgins and Langley Award, which is a prestigious award that has to do with water rescue, and uh, we were fortunate, um, I think, very privileged to receive not one but two awards this past June at the uh, conference at the International Association of Water Rescue Professionals had in Indiana. Um, so I'm going to go over those awards. We have many of the members that are going to, going to be recognized here with us today. And uh, first, we're going to recognize the heart team. So I'm going to invite uh, Ryan Walt and Lieutenant Colonel Michael Gervin to come up here with me while we recognize the heart team. From August 13th to the 15th of 2018, portions of Pennsylvania received catastrophic, catastrophic flooding due to saturated grounds and heavy rains. Benton, PA was the worst hit. PA Hart successfully rescued multiple individuals and animals from rooftops, vehicles, and debris piles. PR, PA Hart moved resources, conducted search and rescue operations, including hoist rescues in challenging conditions. <clears throat> because of these actions, the Higgins and Langley Awards Committee is recognizing these members of PA Hart with the prestigious Higgins and Langley Award. And that would be Ryan Walt, RT and Program Manager. Warren Bud Kaufman, you guys come up as I call you please. Warren Bud Kaufman, PA Hart Rescue Technician. George Drees, Rescue Technician. Darren Kephart, WCO and Rescue Technician. Doug Sergeant Emmett Kyler, Rescue Technician. 
uh, Daryl Tripp, rescue technician. Len Becerra, rescue technician. Michael McCarthy, rescue technician. Major George Giles, pilot in command of the PA National Guard. Matthew Groff, I'm sorry, First Lieutenant Matthew Groff, pilot, PA National Guard. Sergeant Donald McKenzie, crew chief, PA National Guard. And Sergeant First Class Michael Moy, crew chief, PA National Guard. Uh, it, it's very humbling, but also at the same time very rewarding when we uh, are recognized for stuff we have going on here in Pennsylvania. If it had not been for these guys on those couple days, um, who knows uh, what the, the end result would have been. But in this case, we rescued 23 individuals, and uh, they did a, a very good job. So give them a round of applause, please. Next award, I'd invite Lieutenant Colonel Larry Furlong, our SWORT commander, to come up and help with the presentations. This is the uh, Program Development Award, Pennsylvania Fish and Boat Commission SWERT. Established in 2014 by the Pennsylvania Fish and Boat Commission Bureau of Law Enforcement, PA SWERT is a Type 1 swiftwater rescue team with law enforcement capabilities. They respond to state and federally recognized disasters. The team promotes training, education, safety, and provides force protection for the PA Heart team during training and incident response. The Higgins and Langley decided to recognize the SWERT team for an innovation award. And there's recipients, please come out as I call you, is uh, uh, Colonel Corey Britcher, Lieutenant Colonel Larry Furlong, Lieutenant Colonel Tom Burrell, WCO Jeremy Island, um, Rescue Tech Lenny Becerra, who's one of the key instructors. Um, Captain Anthony, I'm sorry, Cap, Captain Anthony Corsino, WCO Anthony Beers, Chris Calhoun, another RT and uh, uh, instructor, WCO Richard Daniels, WCO Eric Davis, WCO Chad Doyle, uh, George Drees, RT and instructor, one up George, uh, WCO Jeffrey Giardina, w, uh, Rescue Tech Scott Gron, another instructor, Sergeant John Hopkins, uh, Darren Kephart, WCO, Joel Corsich, uh, Rescue Tech and instructor, uh, Rescue Tech Instructor Michael Kurtz, Sergeant Emmett Kyler, uh, WCO Aaron Lupacini, Rescue Tech and Instructor Michael McCarthy, uh, WCO Chase Rhodes, Sergeant Jeffrey Sabo, Jeremy Speaks, another RT and Instructor, WCO Caden Thompson, Brad Tracy, another Instructor, and Ryan Walt, RT and Instructor. We recognize, uh, the, the uh, awards committee recognized all those that had a hand in the creation and the first batch of those that were trained, as well as the instructors for this innovation award, it's fantastic. We recognize like this before for Hart, and this is a worldwide award um, that just, uh, it's uh, really nice to receive this recognition. So thank you, gentlemen.
accommodation set in terms of the military and law enforcement units recognizing their, their part in all of this. And challenge points. So I'll be checking you all later for your points. How do you want to do this? I'm looking for two ranks. Four guys out front. Four guys out front. Whatever you want to do. So where's home? It's Mark Summers. That's going to be one of the short guys. No. He's always on the front of the picture of the ball team. So we have one more award today. Uh, it's our, our uh, Wave of Excellence Award. This is an internal staff award we established a few years ago where we recognize our own and our award winner last, uh, last time, Dee Fisher, um, has nominated Tim Klinger to be the recipient of the next Wave of Excellence Award. Uh, Tim's Commonwealth career began in 1989 as a data analyst. He then worked as a purchasing officer and in 1992 came to the Fish and Boat Commission as a management analyst. In 2001, and until the present, he's been our telecommunications specialist. Not only is Tim's the agency telecom go-to person, he's also our webmaster, liaison for the mobile app, an IT help desk service person, and he D calls him her TK, or Twitter king, because he assists in monitoring the constant feed on our Twitter account. Uh, as someone who has been a one-man show for years and who has never, gone, has never hesitated to go on out of his way uh, to help others, never seeks the limelight, limelight Dee was happy to have this opportunity to pass along the Wave of Excellence Award to Tim for his exceptional service and the performance of his duty. So congratulations, Tim Klinger. And I don't know if, Dee, if you'd like to make any comments before we pass the award along. No, no he's, he's done a great job, and I've been thrilled to work with him. Just look for all the emails to come to tell you what a great job you've been doing, and it, it'll last a, a day. So I'll, let, I'll actually let you, since it's your award to give to him, I'll let you pass the award along to him and uh, get some photographs of that. First of all, um, this is the fish award, the traveling fish award that you receive, and this is what gets passed on to the next person in January. So careful now that the last top comes up. <laughs> Sure. So thanks, Eric. And everybody has a copy of the um, quarterly report in your binder, so I won't uh, go over that. Just want to say a couple special things. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank um, Ed Misharka, Norm Gavlick, and Warren Elliott for their years of service. And I thought about it. I wish I'd done this, totaled up the number of years of service that the three of those guys had on the board. We're both here. All three were here for well over eight years. And we really, really do thank uh, the three of them. I was happy to recognize Ed at a meeting of the Sons of Lake Erie, meeting up in front of his peers, Rocco. Thanks for joining me for that. Uh, I know that meant a lot to Ed. Uh, I've already been coordinating with Norm to recognize him at perhaps a local bass club meeting in the fall. They're all out fishing right now, but once they come in uh, for their fall meetings to do something there, and I've talked with Warren about him joining us potentially at the October meeting to be recognized. So again, thanks uh, to them for their years of service. Um, and then want to welcome, uh, for those of you who haven't met, if you could raise your hand just so that folks in the audience know, uh, Dan Pastore, um, new commissioner, uh, uh, Charlie Charlesworth, and Bill Gibney. Uh, really happy to have them on board as just so everybody knows, uh, the governor recently uh, named them to the board uh, 
reappointed Eric to the board, and we're happy to have him back as president. And Rick Kaufman, people are wondering what happened with him. We thought he was already on the board. Just so everyone knows, he was fulfilling an unexpired term of a previous board member, and now is on for his own uh, four-year term. So and we're happy to be at full strength, uh, really happy to be at full strength. Um, speaking of which, just wanted, uh, we mentioned this to the board, but wanted to reemphasize the fact that we are in the process of recruiting for two bureau director positions, which are, are significant for the agency. One is for our Bureau of Fisheries. Um, that position's open for, uh, posting's open for a few more days, and our Bureau of Outreach, Education, and Marketing uh, that had been filled by Steve Kralik, who also retired recently um, in between the last two commission meetings. Want to thank Steve for the work that he did um, for the agency over the years as well. So excited to get those positions filled as well as others and, and join the, the board at full strength. Uh, for me, just a couple points. Wanted to thank our officers, um, commissioners, and everyone else who joined for Operation Dry Water. If you were here for the commission or for the committee meeting, uh, you saw a great uh, medley of videos that Mike Parker pulled together. Um, we are, are, are honored to be a part of Operation Dry Water every year um, to keep boaters safe. So thanks to Corey uh, and the whole team for what they did to our partners that joined us on the water. And a personal thank you uh, to me to Corey Gert for taking me along in his boat on Raystown Lake that day. Uh, and then the uh, last two things I want to mention. One is to call your attention to some really exciting outreach we've been doing on our Muskie program. You've seen at commission meetings uh, presentations about the larger muskies that we're stocking in the 12 to 14 inch range uh, that have a lot better chance of survival, a lot less mortality once we stock them. Well, we never used to tell anybody about that. And I, and I think this came from Jared. I think it was his idea to really put the word out and want to thank uh, Jacob uh, Bender, who's our, I don't know if he's in the room, he's our intern this summer, uh, who has been literally been on the phone every day contacting every member of the legislature, inviting them to join us to see what we do in the field. And it's worked. We've had uh, 15 legislators so far join us in the field to see the stockings that we've been doing around, the, around Pennsylvania the last few weeks. Uh, we have a few more still scheduled. Uh, we've been getting great uh, media coverage. Mike, again, put together a nice video that's gotten thousands of hits. So we're being really methodical about telling people what we do. Uh, muskies is something that we have not promoted as much as perhaps we could have in the past, and you're going to be seeing more of that uh, in the future. If there are programs out there that other staff or volunteers think we should be highlighting more than we do, please speak up. Uh, we don't have the market quartered on figuring this all out. So if there's a particular program that you think uh, we ought to be highlighting, please let us know um, and we'd be happy to do that. Uh, last thing, I'll, I'll ex extend an invitation on August 15th, um, right uh, in conjunction with Operation Hurricane, which will be a large water rescue uh, simulation exercise on the river at Fort Hunter. Uh, the House Policy Committee and House uh, Game and Fishery Committee will be having a special joint hearing here that morning at 9 a.m. Uh, thanks to Julie Kerrigan for pulling that together. Um, I don't know if we've ever had a joint committee hearing of any group of committees here at our office. And it'll be great for the members of the legislature to learn about what we do, more about the program, than actually go out and see them on the water. So if any members of the public would like to join that for us, uh, we'd love to have you. So with that, that concludes my report. Thanks, Tim. We did have two executive sessions. We had one yesterday on Monday morning. Uh, we also had one this morning, Tuesday, and we discussed uh, some property and personnel issues. And legal. And legal. Thank you. Uh, Mr. President, we also had a uh, notational vote. It occurred uh, July 9th and 10th via email. Uh, that vote was to elect uh, Commissioner Eric Cussar to fill the vacant office of the board president until his formal election this morning. Uh, that vote, that motion was approved uh, by a 10 0 vote in favor. Thank Thanks, Wayne. And thank you, Commissioners. There's been a lot of elections with me, so I appreciate it. Uh, okay, we're going to move on to committee reports, I believe. Mm -hmm. And I will start it off with the executive committee. We met yesterday morning. Uh, we talked about a uh, uh, energy saving project that we're going to embrace going forward here. 
Um, and then we also had a discussion about our <clears throat> and an update on the progress of our strategic plan um, that we're in the works on. So uh, that concludes my report. Move on to voting. Richard? Thank you. Um, as your voting committee this met this morning and we considered two rulemakings, uh, one of them was on the a, a no wake zone on the Allegheny Monongahela Ohio River, and another one, uh, and that and that uh, rulemaking will be will vote. Commissioners will vote on that later today. We also had discussion on another uh, rulemaking on motorboat noise control, which is uh, something that's been an issue for us. We've had an inability to enforce it, and these new reg that we will hopefully approve here in a few minutes will help our waterways conservation officers do a better job and have more legal standing when they uh, are trying to enforce uh, motorboat noise regulations. Um, we also received a background presentation on the, H the Higgins and Langley Awards, or one of the awards that you saw here, and that was presented to us so we knew more about the scope and the importance of the award. That concludes my report, Mr. President. Thank you. Fisheries and hatcheries. Our Fisheries Committee met yesterday, and uh, we started off, we had 10 public comments, mostly in regards to all tackle versus uh, artificial only tackle. And um, from there, we went on to some rulemaking. Chris Coons made a s several, several items. He uh, was out of breath, I think, till, the, till his time was up, but uh, we discussed amendments to, min to uh, Section 65 to Mincy Lake, amendments to uh, Donegal Lake in Westmoreland County. Then uh, we went on to several designations that we'll have some votes on later. Proposed additions to Class A wild trout waters, classification of wild trout streams, addition of Spruce Creek uh, to a catch and release um, versus artificial lures versus uh, all tackle. Addition of Little Mud Pond to the stop Stock trout waters open to year-round fishing. Addition of Lily Pond in Pike County to the stock trout waters open to year-round fishing as well. Removing Mincy Lake in Northampton County from the Big Bass Program. Removal of Brady's Lake in Montgomery, uh, excuse me, in Monroe County from the Big Bass Program. Removal of Brady's Lake, Monroe County from the Panfish Enhancement Program and also the addition of Peck's Pond to a catch and release lakes program when that pond restoration effort um, is finished. And then we had uh, three uh, discussion items. Rick Martha uh, did a presentation on Swayo stout, uh, State Hatchery and, and uh, overview. Benner Spring Water Quality Lab overview was given to us a presentation by Amy <coughs> Nunsgesser, and uh, we had a, a presentation from Daryl Pierce uh, in regards to the Upper Delaware River Joint Fishery Management Program. Mr. Chairman, that concludes the report from the Fisheries Committee. Thanks, Rick. Habitat and Environment. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, our committee met yesterday. We did not have items for rulemaking or designations, but we did get an important update on uh, stream quality, uh, local stream quality work. Uh, the highlight was a, a partnership in North Central Pennsylvania uh, of our staff, Department of Environmental Protection, the Union County Conservation District, and the North Central Pennsylvania Conservancy. This group, since 2009, has worked on over 17 miles of waterways at 150 sites so certainly kudos to that partnership and it should be noted that we have staff and partnerships uh, doing similar work throughout the commonwealth and uh, so it's important not to underestimate uh, the hard work and the value that that, uh, that our crews and our staff put into that and that would be that committee report thanks dj law enforcement thank you mr president um law enforcement <coughs> met, met this morning um we had no final rulemaking or proposed rulemaking to deal with. We did have a discussion item on the Operation Dry Water. Um, thanks to Colonel Richard and uh, Mike Parker, we had a montage of, uh, I would say, advertisements uh, about dry water, and it was very good. I think the important take home here is in Operation Dry Water, they had over 1,400 boating, boardings. Of that, uh, they issued 760 warnings, 133 
citations, but only six voting under the influence um, citations, and I think that's a compliment to the previous law enforcement that we've done as an agency, and I thank our law enforcement for that. That concludes my report. Thank you. Thank you, Ron. Legislative and public outreach. Thank you, Mr. President. <coughs> we met this morning. Um, we had a very brief but uh, informative meeting. We had a we were given updates on the many different pieces of legislation that uh, the Fish Commission is sponsoring and supporting and trying to push through. Um, just a note on that: they've they've had a very busy uh, they had a very busy six months with the session. Um, I think we were represented very well. I know Tim. Julie and Mike spent a lot of time in the Hill, as well as uh, maybe some of the others. But um, there's a there's a number of pieces of legislation that, that weren't completed, but we feel we'll be we'll be able to accomplish that once the session resumes. Um, and then we had a presentation on women and youth activities, um, and I really would encourage everyone to, to to find out a little bit more about that. Look on the website. Um, some great programs, the Catch program, and just a number of people. In terms of outreach that we're touching throughout the Commonwealth, um, it's I think it's an important program of what we're doing and really developing some grass, grassroots efforts to get people interested in fishing and boating, and they're doing it in some pretty innovative ways. Um, there were no propo proposed or final rulemaking, and that concludes my report. Thanks, Bill. Is there any public comment from the commissioners or staff? Move on to uh, executive administrative. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, for those who may not know me, my name is Brian Barner, and I am the deputy for administration with the Fish and Boat Commission. Uh, for the board's consideration, I am presenting item A titled Jarrett Property Acquisition on the West Branch of the Susquehanna River, Lycoming County. Uh, which can be found on, uh, starting on page three of the agenda. Uh, this item was reviewed and approved by the Executive and Administrative Committee on July 15th, and it uh, authorizes the acquisition of a three-acre parcel of land for $71,500. Uh, the property provides access to the west branch of the Susquehanna River and is located adjacent to and downriver of the Commission's existing Muncie Access site. If acquired, the Commission plans to develop this site and construct a new boat launch and public use facility. Uh, the acquisition will be funded with proceeds generated through uh, the previous sales of Commission-owned surplus property. Future development of the site will occur using a combination of capital, boat fund, and Federal Sport Fish Restoration Act monies. Motion to accept the staff recommendation. Is there a second? Second. Second it. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, we're uh, Cody. Good morning, Commissioners. Uh, I'm Colonel Corey Bridger, Bureau Law Enforcement Director, as well as the BLA for the Commonwealth. Uh, I have two items for you. Uh, consideration this morning. First is a final rulemaking to amend. It's an amendment to section 111.2 Allegheny County and it's for the area known as the Point in Pittsburgh. That's where the Monongahela and Allegheny Rivers come together and form the Ohio. This busy boating destination is regulated specifically in, um, by regulation 58 PA code 111.2. Uh, during this during the busy boating season, a no-wake zone is enforced from the Fort Pitt Bridge on the Mine, the Monongahela River, to the Ninth Street Bridge over the Allegheny River, to the West End Bridge on the Ohio River. This zone is, in effect, weekends from May 1st to October 1st each year, as well as the three summer holidays. Uh, recently, several entities, including the city and the county, have asked us to take a look at that and extend um, this no-wake zone in two ways. First, they ask us to extend it uh, upriver on the Allegheny to the uh, Veterans Bridge, and also they ask us to keep it in effect until November 1st, which would give an extra month of no-wake uh, during that time period. Uh, we looked at this and took the proposal to the, uh, the Boating Advisory Board, and they approved it on January 8th, 2019, brought it to the commissioners at the January meeting, and today we're asking, staff is asking to uh, pass this uh, amendment as set forth 
and then the notice of proposed rulemaking, and it will take effect uh, for, when it uh, appears in the PA bulletin. So a motion. So moved. Second. Second. Any discussion? All in favor by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Uh, the second is a proposed rulemaking. Uh, this would have been on page five in your agenda, but I handed out an amended version this morning during committee. I hope you all have that still. And this is an amendment to section 119 called Motorboat Noise Control. And over the last several boating seasons, the commission has received multiple complaints about motorboat noise levels and requests for more enforcement. Under Title 58, Chapter 119, motorboat noise control regulations require mufflers and various noise levels for motorboats, uh, which were established in 1994. This regulation package was based on a model act provided by the National Association of State Boating Law Administrators, or NASBLA. Even though the commission adopted most of these recommendations, from NASBLA when it comes to determining if a boat is in violation, the regulation is very subjective. Uh, additionally, standards adopted have never truly been enforceable due to a lack of training and recognized devices. Um, staff took a look at this in 2018 and have set forth some amendments to it that is uh, found in your document, in your agenda, um, for 119.3, 119.6, and 119.8. And staff is recommending that the commission approve a publication and notice of propose, proposed rulemaking containing the amendments described in the commentary. And of course, if adopted on final rulemaking, these amendments would go into effect upon publication in the PA bulletin. And one last note, the the uh, BAB did take a look at these amendments on uh, June 27th of 2019 and recommended we move them to you. So motion to approve. Motion to accept the staff recommendation. Second. Second. All in favor? Is there a discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you, Commissioners. Fisheries. Good morning, Commissioners uh, and everyone else. I'm Andy Shields. I'm Deputy Director for Field Operations, and I'll be taking us through the rest of the agenda here this morning. So just to uh, give you a little bit of preparation, the first two are going to be proposed rulemaking, and then after that we're going to be discussing designations. And these next two are, are very similar, and why they're similar, they're miscellaneous special regulations. These are uh, lakes that have been drawn down. They're being refilled, but they are stocked with trout. And because they are stocked with trout, we need a miscellaneous special regulation in order to make some things happen there that will allow people to fish for trout while we protect the warm water, cool water fishery that's developing. So with that, we'll get into this by uh, saying we're on page six. This is amendment to 65.24, which as I mentioned is miscellaneous <coughs> special regulation. Uh, Mincy Lake in Northampton County. It's 122 acre uh, fertile impoundment owned by the Commonwealth and operated by Fish and Boat. It was drawn down uh, for repairs. We expect it to be refilled uh, early winter of 2019. And upon refilling, we're going to open the, propose to open the lake to fishing under miscellaneous special regulation, which will allow for harvest for trout during the normal trout season, but catch and release for all other species. Staff recommended the commission approve a publication of a notice of proposed rulemaking. And if approved on final rulemaking, the amendment will go into effect upon publication of Pennsylvania Bulletin. I'll make that motion. Is there a second? Second. Second. Any discussion? All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. So the opposite end of the, st of the state, we have Donegal Lake in Westmoreland County. Again, amendment to 65.24. Uh, the same situation is in place here regarding the miscellaneous special reg. Uh, Donegal Lake is a 90-acre impoundment owned by the Commonwealth and managed by Fish and Boat. It was dewatered during fall of 2016. It is also expected to be refilled during uh, early winter of 2019. And upon refilling, uh, staff proposed to open the lake under this miscellaneous special reg, which will allow for harvest of trout during the harvest, uh, open trout season and uh, catch and release regulations for warm water, cool water fishes. 
Um, we recommend, staff recommends approve uh, publication of notice of proposed rulemaking. And if approved on final rulemaking, the amendment will go into effect upon publication in the Pennsylvania Bulletin. Is there a motion to approve? Motion to accept the staff recommendation. Second. Second. Bill second. Any discussion? All in five, favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? So now we're going to move into designations, which is what the rest of the agenda items will be. We're on page 10. And these are proposed additions to the list of Class A wild trout streams. Uh, at this meeting, we are requesting approval for three stream sections. Uh, two of those sections are in Center County, unnamed tributary Nittany Creek, Rag Valley Run. The other section is the south work of Ben's Creek in Somerset County. Um, a notice of proposed designations was published on May 11, 2019, the Pennsylvania Bulletin. The commission received a total of 101 public comments regarding the proposed designations, 98 supported, two opposed, and one comment support a specific water. Copies of all the public comments have been provided to you in your information packet. Staff recommend the commission add these three sections to its Class A wild trout streams list, and if approved, these additions will go into effect upon publication of a second notice in the Pennsylvania Board. Motion to approve. So move. No second. Second. No discussion. Favor say aye. 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 Next item, page 11, is classification of wild trout streams. At this meeting, staff are recommending the addition of 67 new waters to the Commission's list of wild trout streams and revise the section limits of one water. A notice of these proposed designations was published also on May 11, 2019. The Commission received a total of 94 public comments regarding these designations. 93 support the proposed designations and one comment supported a specific water. You've been provided a copy of all these public comments in your packet. Our staff recommend the addition of 67 new waters and revise the section limits of one water as set forth in this notice of proposed designations. If approved, these additions and revision will go into effect upon publication of a second notice in the Pennsylvania Bulletin. Is there a motion to approve? So move. Second. Second. Bill second. The um, next item is the addition of Spruce Creek. We have to. Wait, wait. We, we need a vote on that. That we approve it. I'm sorry, I apologize. Okay. <coughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? I was trying to get my cough in before I started Spruce Creek because it's a long one. I apologize for that. No problem. <coughs> so the next item. Um, is the addition of Spruce Creek Section 3, Huntington County, to the Catch and Release All Tackle Program. And there, this item has been on the Commission agenda in the April meeting, and again at the July meeting. Spruce Creek and the property that we're discussing is approximately 800 feet long. It is in Huntington County. It is the site of the former Indian Caverns. The Fish and Boat Commission recently uh, became the official owners of this property and of this length of stream. This stream is, is in an area of the state where there's a long history of uh, privately owned uh, water and with no access to the public. Um, this particular stream section has been surveyed by Fish and Boat Commission and found to contain a very high density of wild trout, 452 kilograms per hectare, which is more than 10 times the minimum of 40 kilograms per hectare needed to make Class A wild brown trout. At the April meeting, there was a staff proposal to recommend that um, the commissioners consider adding Spruce Creek, this Section 3, to the Artificial Lures Catch and Release Only Program. At that meeting, there was a, um, a motion made to table that and to provide an additional uh, proposal, and that proposal was um, all tackle catch and release. So catch and release all tackle. First proposal was Artificial Lures all tackle. Uh, there was public comment received both on the April posting and then again on the, the subsequent posting. And so in the first one, uh, it was published in the Pennsylvania Bulletin on March 16th. The commission received two public comments, both in support of the proposed designation. Following the April meeting and a, a notice of designation being published for catch and release all tackle, the commission received a total of 212 public comments regarding the proposed designation. 
125 support the proposed designation, 48 opposed, and 39 comments were placed in the other category. Copies of all public comments were provided to the commissioners. As mentioned in the, in the previous committee uh, summary, there was public comment yesterday, and this has been a, a very thoroughly discussed issue. Uh, as a result, following the public comment, the presentations, and, and the two sets of postings, staff recommend the commission add Spruce Creek Section 3, Hydenden County, to the Catcher and Lease Artificial Lures Only Program. And if approved, this designation will go into effect upon publication of a second notice in the Pennsylvania Bulletin. Is there a motion to accept? So move. Second. Second. Any discussion? favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Opposed. Opposed. Two. Uh, we should be up to page 14, the addition of Little Mud Pond in Pike County to the stock trout waters open to year-round fishing. Little Mud Pond is a 26-acre glacial pond owned by DCNR and located in Delaware State Forest in Porter Township, Pike County. Um, what, we're, we, uh, what we're proposing to do is add this to stock waters, trout waters open to year-round fishing which means simply that there is a, a good warm water fishing community there in addition to a following fire stock trout program. This type of uh, designation allows a lake to be used for both and it also allows warm water cool water fishing to occur during that period of time from March 1 to the normal opening day when typically no fishing would be allowed because of the stock trout program. A notice of proposed designation was published on May 25th the Commission did not receive any public comments regarding this proposal. Staff recommend the Commission add Little Mud Pond in Pike County to the Stock Trout Waters Open Year Round Fishing Program, and if approved, it would go into effect on January 1, 2020. So moved. Second. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So you're going to see a similar theme with the next one, which is Lily Pond, uh, which is also in Pike County. It's a 23-acre impoundment owned by Pennsylvania Department of Conservation and Natural Resources in Milford Township, Pike County. And this is also a request for the same designation uh, to put this in the Stock Trout Waters Open year-round fishing program to allow fishing for the warm water, cool water community during the period that trout fishing and all fishing would normally be closed from March 1 to the opening day. A notice of proposed designation was published on May 25th, and the Commission did not receive any public comments regarding this proposal. Staff recommend the Commission add Lily Pond in Pike County to Stock Trout Waters Open Year Round Fishing Program, and if approved, this designation will go into effect on January 1, 2020. Motion to accept the staff recommendation. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? The next item is removal of Mincy Lake in Northampton County from the Big Bass Program. Mincy Lake is, a, I'll use the word fertile for this one because you're going to hit your infertile on some that are coming up. Mincy Lake is a 122 acre fertile impoundment owned by the Commonwealth and managed by the Fish and Boat Commission. It was dewatered in 2017 for dam repairs. It is also uh, to be completed and expect refilling to be occurring sometime uh, early winter, uh, late, late fall, early winter 2020. And upon uh, refilling, staff uh, plan on making this a catch and release opportunity like we do for most of our lakes when they're refilled. But this is a bit of a housekeeping issue because it's under the Big Bass Program and for us to allow it to be open to catch and release fishing as it comes back as, it, as it's refilled and establishes as a fishery, we need to first remove the Big Bass Program designation. So uh, a notice of proposed designation was published on May 25th in the Pennsylvania Bulletin. We did not receive any public comments regarding this proposal. Staff recommend the Commission remove Mincy Lake in Northampton County from the Big Bass Program. And if approved, this designation will go into effect on January 1, 2020. So moved. 
Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? <coughs> The next two are very similar. I will describe the first one in a little more detail and then the second one in less detail. They're both about Brady's Lake in Monroe County. Uh, in the first item, it's to remove it from the Big Bass Program. Brady's Lake, unlike Mincy Lake, is a 229-acre infertile impoundment, meaning it does not have the nutrient base and the productivity to, to create the bass and, and you'll hear about in a moment, panfish fishery that we were hoping for using special regulations. Does not have the physical uh, capabilities to produce the fishery that those regulations were designed to, to protect and, and, and cause to flourish. This is located on state game lands in Coolbaugh Township in Monroe County. Did not meet the minimum rec recommended program criteria for our waters that we managed with big bass regulations during multiple survey years in 2012, 2015, and 2018. And therefore, staff are recommending removal of Brady Lake, Brady's Lake from the big bass program. I notice that this proposed designation was published on May 25th in the Pennsylvania <coughs> Bulletin, and the commission did not receive any public comments regarding this proposal. Therefore, staff recommend the commissioner remove Brady's Lake from the Big Bass program, and if approved, it will revert to Commonwealth Inland Waters Angling Regulations on January 1, 2020. Do I have a motion to approve? So moved. Seconded. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? So in like fashion, the next item is also about Brady's Lake in Monroe County, and the uh, staff recommendation is going to be remove it from the Panfish Enhancement Program for the same reasons it was unable to uh, produce the quality panfish as it did not produce the quality bass fishery that those regulations were designed to, to um, encourage. As a result, by moving this and the, the previous item back to Commonwealth Inland Regulations, it allow anglers to harvest fish if they desire uh, of sizes and creel limits and seasons similar to any other uh, lake or, or water body in Pennsylvania. Um, a notice of proposed rulemaking was published again on May 25th. Commission did not receive any public comments regarding this proposal. And if uh, staff recommend the commission remove Brady's Lake from the Panfish Enhancement Program, and if approved, this will revert to Commonwealth Inland Waters Regulations on January 1, 2020. Do I have a motion to approve? So moved. Second. 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 If you don't have that. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 And finally, the addition of Peck's Pond in Pike County to the Catch and Release, Pro Catch and Release Lakes Program. Pex Pond is a 300-acre impoundment owned by Pennsylvania DCNR, located in the Delaware State Forest in Blooming Grove and Porter Townships in Pike County. This is another lake that was drawn down for dam repairs in 2017. It's expected to be refilled with water in late 2019, early 2020. This is not a, a stock trout fishery, therefore it can be managed as a designation. Uh, this proposal follows the routine that uh, we have been following now for several years. When a lake is dewatered, it is uh, being refilled and it's being restored. We like to protect that uh, developing fishery with catch and release regulations until the biologists have uh, a period of time to assess that population and find out what regulation package it should go under. Typically, this is going to be a three to five year period before a decision would be made on uh, what the final regulations would be for that body of water. A notice of the proposed designation was published on May 25th. The commission did not receive any public comments regarding the proposal. Um, staff recommend the commission add Pex Pond to the Catch and Release Lakes program, and if approved, the designation will go into effect on January 1st, 2020. So moved. Second. First and second are there. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? That's all I have. Thank you. Is there any new business? Ms. Chad, time and place of the October meeting that will be here. Yes. Do we hit on? The next commission meeting will occur on October 21st and 
22nd. That'll be in Harrisburg as well. Still have some committee meetings. Just a comment on that, if I could. Um, we talked about the possibility of getting together with the game commissioners. Can we look at if that, that Sunday night before might be a possibility for that? We'll talk about that. Right. Okay, so we have time, 21st and 22nd of October. Great. Anything else for, uh, appreciate what everybody's doing. Everybody's got a lot of your plate, I know. Um, legislative, you know, we all have. And, uh, you know, it's, it's a challenging time, but we can do a lot of it's a good time. We can move in advance things a lot of new areas of what we do and how we do it. But we do so much, guys. You guys do so much. And I know it goes on Sunday to a lot of you, but it makes a difference. We do a lot, not a lot, I would say. It's you. It's the staff. So uh, thank you. Thanks, commissioners, for uh, back in. I don't know how I got back in. Thank you. And uh, we're adjourned.